A whole roasted duck is decadent, luxurious, and it turns out not very hard to get right. That's why it's become my cold weather feasting meat of choice. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a whole roasted duck with some side dishes and a really nice fruity French style wine sauce that really ties the whole room together. To get started, I'm gonna grab a five to six pound whole duck. I bought this one frozen at the grocery store and thawed it in my fridge for two to three nights. Right away, I'll pull out the stuff that's inside the bod, like the neck, the heart, and the livers, and I'll save the neck only and freeze it to make some stock in the future. There's also an excess amount of skin fat around the neck and butt area that needs to be trimmed off. Ducks are like aggressively fatty and it's part of what makes them delicious to eat, but it's also the main thing that we need to mitigate to cook one properly. The stuff around the neck and the butt is nearly 100% fat and it's gonna make for a greasy final product, so I'm gonna lose it all. Once that's all cleaned up, I'm gonna tie together the legs or truss them. This is gonna help cook the whole duck as a solid unit and keep it from drying out in the oven. Once I got that string pulled under each leg bone, I'm gonna crisscross it and then pull it tight like this. Then I'm gonna put the string under each leg and create a little X in the middle and then pull it again and then tie it off. Once that's all tied up, I'll cut the string and now I'm gonna trim off the wings. For that, I'll cut at the first joint and then bend it back to split it open. That feels weird and gross, but also very satisfying. And then I'll slice my knife through the gap in the bones. You could skip the de-winging step here if you wanted to keep it easy, but for me, the wings serve me a lot better in a freezer bag for the next time I wanna make stock instead of being dried out and overcooked on the side of this bird. Now, the next step in mitigating the excessive fattiness of this duck is to score the skin. For that, I'm using a sharp pointy knife and I'm poking the skin many, many times. These little holes are going to allow tiny little channels for the copious amount of fat that's stored under the breast skin to escape as it cooks. If you skip this step, the final product will be flabby and greasy and overall just pretty gross to eat. Think of it as like an undercooked strip of bacon. Once each side of this duck is well perforated, I'm gonna season it generously with salt. For a six pound bird like this, I'm gonna be sprinkling at least five to six tablespoons all over the whole body. That might seem like a lot of salt, but most of it's gonna get removed before we roast it, but I'll get back to that. For now, I'm gonna dry brine this bird in the fridge for the total amount of time that it takes me to make and then bake my potatoes au gratin. To get started on the gratin, or gratin, however you say it, I'm gonna need a mandolin to help slice the potatoes. In total, I've got 1500 grams or four large peeled rusted potatoes here, and I'm gonna be using this mandolin to slice them into a roughly eighth inch or three millimeter slice, give or take. If you don't have a mandolin, you could certainly use a knife. Just be prepared to cook the dish a little bit longer because you definitely won't be able to get all your potatoes sliced this thin. Once all four potatoes are sliced up, I'm gonna scoot them off into a little sheet tray here and then grab a medium bowl to measure out some cheese. Into the bowl goes 100 grams of medium sharp cheddar, 100 grams of Swiss Gruyere cheese. I grated both of these cheeses on the largest hold sides of my new, very large, very comfortable to use box grater. Thanks, mom. Then in goes 50 grams of Parmesan cheese, five grams of cornstarch, and then I'm gonna give all three cheeses a toss to coat. I'm using cornstarch here for basically the same reason that I did for my Philly cheesesteak cheese whiz. The extra starch from the cornstarch is basically gonna keep the cheese from breaking and getting grainy when it's exposed to the high heat of the oven. Once everything's all dusted up with the starch, I'm gonna set this bowl aside and then grab a standard eight by eight inch brownie pan. Into that, I'm gonna layer my potatoes so that they're overlapping about 30% or so. I'm gonna do four to five rows per layer depending on the size of the potato. After layer one, I'm gonna hit the potatoes with a very light pinch of salt and then seven to eight cranks of black pepper. Layer two is gonna get laid down perpendicular to layer one. I'll repeat this cross hatch pattern as I build this thing because that's gonna bring a little bit more structural integrity so that when I lift out a slice later on, it's not gonna slide apart as easily. After layer two, I'm gonna lay down about one fifth of my grated cheeses. That seems weirdly specific and it is, but you'll see why I'm doing that in just a second. Layer three goes down, then salt and pepper. Layer Layer four is gonna get finished with another fifth of the cheese. Layer five, salt and pepper. Layer six gets cheese. Layer seven, we'll get some salt and pepper. And then layer eight is the top. Next, I'm gonna scoot that pan aside and then grab a high-sided container. And into that measure, 75 grams of chicken stock and 125 grams of heavy cream. That stuff's gonna get poured all over the stacked potatoes. And if you're wondering, hey, Bride, these potatoes are starting to look a little bit oxidized, dude. Why didn't you rinse them? Well, the starch on the outside of that potato is going to cause the potatoes to bind the layers of this gratin together. If I washed off that starch, we would have a sloppy, soggy kind of wet gratin that isn't at all stuck together. Once we're all creamed out, I'm gonna finish the build of this gratin by layering on the last two fifths of the three cheese mixture. The whole top needs to be well covered with cheese to prevent too much evaporation while cooking. 
Next, I'll preheat my oven to 325F 160C and then cover the gratin with foil and then load it into the oven and bake it for 70 to 90 minutes. 45 minutes later, I'm gonna come back and remove the foil lid. In the first part of cooking, that foil helps keep the heat within the stacked potato so that they actually cook a lot more evenly and it keeps the cheese on top from getting overcooked. That looks good. Now I'm gonna let this cook for another 45 minutes. 30 minutes later, or about 15 minutes before the gratin is done, I'm gonna grab a very large pot of water and bring it to a simmer. This is probably a 10 quart pot, but you could get away with as little as a six or even five quart pot if that's all you had. Once this water is up to a simmer, it's time to start cooking the duck and stop cooking the gratin. When I pull the gratin out of the oven, you can see that all the cheese on top is nice and melty and it's just on the cusp of being golden brown. Most importantly, to tell if the potatoes are cooked throughout, I'm gonna use my cake tester to poke in a few different places. It should be soft, but still just a little bit toothsome, and that feels great. Now I'm gonna raise my oven temperature for ducky to 450F 230C. From there, I'll cover the gratin with foil and set it aside until it's feasting time, and then I'll grab my duck from the fridge. Now, the last step in fat mitigation for this duck is gonna to be to simmer it in boiling water for 15 minutes. I'll admit that putting things into a pot of water right before you're supposed to dry roast them isn't really super intuitive, but hot water has a really high thermal density to it, and that's gonna tighten the skin quickly and start the process of rendering the fat a lot quicker. After 15 minutes of boiling this whole bird, in water, I'm gonna fish it out of the bath and transfer it back over to a wire rack for roasting. Before I load it in though, take a quick look. That skin is much tighter overall, and now the duck actually kinda looks like a chicken, and from this point we can basically cook it like one. So into the very hot oven it goes to high roast for 45 minutes. 45 minutes later, when I check back, you can see that the skin is getting roasty and starting to caramelize, and this whole thing is dripping with rendered fat. If your main goal from here was crackly skin, you could definitely keep roasting this duck at 450 F, but you would probably dry out the breast meat in the process. So for me to hit a middle ground of well-rendered flavorful skin and a juicy breast meat, I'm gonna turn the oven down to 300 F 150 C and continue to cook this for about 30 to 60 more minutes. While that finishes up, let's make a meaty Frenchy wine sauce for this fowl. Into a medium saucepan, I'm gonna measure 500 grams or about three glasses of wine. I like to keep red and white versions of these handy little Boda boxes in my pantry because they're like $5 each and they're more than good enough for cooking with. Next, I'll add in 250 grams of chicken stock and then a whole chopped shallot, two cloves of garlic, three to four sprigs of thyme, three to four bay leaves, and then the prime ingredient, 150 grams of frozen dark sweet cherries. Cherries and wine are a classic French combo for rich fatty meats like duck and pork. And I was really excited when I realized that I could just buy a bag of pre-pitted frozen ones at the grocery store. Now the saucepan's gonna go down over medium high heat to reduce for about 25 minutes or until the liquid is about 80 to 90% evaporated. While that reduces, and while we wait for the duck to finish cooking, I'm gonna start my caramelized leek and Brussels sprout side dish. For that, I've got one very thick, long leek that is very dirty, but that's not gonna matter because I always prefer to wash my leeks thoroughly after they're cut. So once this leek is sliced into about a half inch thick pieces, I'm gonna grab my salad spinner and then run it over to the sink and run cold water over it to thoroughly wash every last bit. Using a salad spinner is a decent amount of extra work and an annoying dish to do, but the mellow grassy sweetness of leeks are more worth it in my opinion. I rarely eat them, but when I do, I'm always kind of thinking to myself, damn, that is a delicious alium. I should eat more of these. Now to cook these leeks, I'm gonna move that sauce over to a weaker burner. Let's check on that, by the way. It looks about halfway reduced. Great, we'll keep on cooking. Now on my big boy burner, I'm gonna preheat my big boy 14 inch pan over medium high heat. Once that's hot, in goes a long squeezer of neutral oil and then in goes my leeks. Behind the leeks, I'll add a strong pinch of salt and then a thick knob of butter. For me, the butter and leek combination is as classically French as anything else. And when you pair that with the cherry wine waterfowl situation we're working on, this is gonna be very sick, basically. In total, I'm gonna sweat these leeks out and caramelize them for about three to four minutes. Once they're softened and start to take on some color like this, I'm gonna transfer them over to a little baby sheet tray to hold on until I'm ready for them. The pan goes back over high heat. I'll wipe out the detritus. Then in goes another long squeeze of neutral oil and then one full quart or about 650 to 700 grams of cut 
Brussels sprouts. A big pinch of salt goes in, then I'll give the pan a nice toss toss to get everything nicely coated with fat. An extra step that I like to take here is to arrange the Brussels sprouts cut side down as much as possible to ensure a nice even coloration on them as they cook. Skip that if you want. I'm gonna add a touch more oil to help transfer the heat from the pan as effectively as possible. Then I'll let these sprouts cook covered with foil over medium high heat for about three to four minutes. I almost always tent my pan roasted vegetables at home with foil because that steam the vegetables give off gets trapped by the foil and as a result cooks everything much faster and much more evenly. After three to four minutes of being cooked under the foil, I'm gonna come back, shake things up and check on the progress. I think a touch more salt, a touch more oil, and then the foil goes back on and I'm gonna cook three to four minutes more or until the Brussels sprouts are about 90% of the way to tender. They're gonna carry over cook while we finish the rest of this feast. To finish this, the caramelized leeks go into the pan and then many, many cranks of black pepper followed by three to four sprigs of thyme that I've de-stemmed and then chopped. Toss, toss to combine and there we go. Roasted Brussels with caramelized leeks. An amazing, fresh, roasty green side dish for roasted rich meat. To keep hot, I'll tint with foil, move it off heat, and then scoot it to the back of the stove. Now, let's check the duck. It's been roasted at 300F for about 30 minutes now, and when I put my thermo into the deep part of the breast, I get 165F, 75C, and in the deep part of the thigh, that's 175F, 80C. That's perfect. Despite duck being served mid-rare most of the time in French restaurants, it's still very succulent and tasty when properly cooked to well done done just like a whole chicken. Now it's time to bring all this stuff together onto one plate. After an hour and a half, my gratin is still quite warm actually, so I'm just gonna pop it into that 300 oven for just a few minutes while I take a look at the reduction. As you can see, I cooked off about 90% of the liquid, and now we've got a super concentrated cherry and herb flavored wine that's ready to be finished. To do that, I'm gonna strain off the aromatics and the cherries, making sure to press out as much of that liquid as I can. Behind that, I'm gonna add in one cup of this store-bought poultry demi-gloss. And when I say one cup, I mean one package, not one liquid literal measurement cup. This is the same brand of product that I use for my beef bourguignon video, and I was really happy with the result. If you're not familiar with demi-gloss, it's basically the backbone of all French meat sauces, and it's made from reduced veal stock. It takes days to make properly, and it's not very fun. I really recommend the store-bought stuff for most home cooks, particularly this brand. Behind the demi-gloss goes one packet of powdered gelatin that I've dissolved in about a quarter cup of water, and then I'm gonna scoot this sauce over to the store. Thank God these shoes are machine washable. Oh, it's on the cabinets. Help me! Now to actually finish this sauce, I'm gonna reduce the demi and gelatin together for about five minutes or so, or until the bubbles are looking glossy and large like this. If the sauce can coat the back of a spoon well, and when I drag my finger through it, it can leave a little bit of a trail, then I know it's finished. The viscosity here is what the French call nappe, and it was made possible by that little bit of powdered gelatin that we added. That stuff thickens the sauce in the same way that the veal gelatin from the bones would have in a proper French kitchen. The finishing touch here is to add a nice pinch of salt, stir that to dissolve, and then give it one last taste before we plate everything up. Over at the gratin, I'm gonna cut out a squarish piece for my feast. And as you can see, the combo of letting that gratin cook slowly covered for the first half of its life, paired with the long, slow rest time has given us a well-set, creamy, tender block of cheesy potatoes. Honestly, just wow. To carve the duck, I'm gonna be pretty loosey-goosey with it. I'm gonna start by slicing straight down the breastbone. Oh, loosey-goosey. <laughs> This is the duck. I'll admit, at this point, I had been filming and smelling roasted duck for many hours, and I really wanted to get it on the plate so that I could eat it. So I basically chopped the breast off and then just lopped off the thigh by cutting through the thigh joint, and then I cut them up and mixed them together. Notice how shiny and succulent this looks, and the full render on the skin, by the way. That means all of our moves worked out nicely. I'll be the first to admit that this plate of food is not low labor, like, at all, but that was never the point. The idea here is to serve your food friends and or family something truly special and decadent that blurs the line between home cooking and a nice restaurant. The duck is moist and savory, especially with that meaty fruity cherry wine sauce. The potatoes are perfectly tender and the leek brussy combo is both light and vegetal but sweet and dark. It's a perfect cold weather feast and I really hope you treat yourself to it sometime soon. Let's eat this thing.